is tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we're taking a look at this quite famous technique of how to circularize or polarize um, a landscape so it looks like it's going down into a little sort of vortex into the world. Um, you can see this all over the internet nowadays. I can't really find who did it first so I'm just going to replicate it and see how easy hard it is to do so. Um, turns out it's actually pretty easy. Um, the most difficult thing is finding an image that works well with this. Uh, for example, I have three images here, each of which I thought would be just fine. Um, some trees uh, with some mountains in the background, some snow-capped mountains, and some sort of warmish mountains fading away into the landscape. This one I thought would be great because um, it's got the different layers and things which would look like the different layers of the um, circle when manipulated. Um, and I thought this one would be great because of the contrast between the white and the mountains. However, when we dove into Photoshop, you'll notice that when you twist these, they kind of lose, or at least this mountainous one, kind of loses the sense of what it is. You can't really tell that these are still mountains. It could just be some kind of artistic brush. So I got rid of that one. The uh, other one was good, but had too much of a break between um, the different sides. Now we could fix this quite easily and we could fix the mountains quite easily, but fading this kind of harsh uh, white and black area into this yellow one could have worked, but would have taken a very long time. Wouldn't have been the best uh, example for a tutorial. Um, however, the mountains with the trees worked absolutely perfectly. It's exactly what we wanted. And I've already gone through and fixed the join here. So this is what happens when I polarize it straight away. You can see that all we've got to do is fix this tiny crease here, add in some trees and we're good to go, um, which is what I did. So I'm just going to show you now how I did that by starting again from scratch. Let's close off everything and I'm going to open up my forest image with the trees in it. Now the first thing you're going to want to look for is an area where the left hand side of your frame and the right hand side of your frame are roughly level when it comes to their horizontal axis, okay? Um, the second thing you're gonna to wanna to do is understand that it needs to be a square image, perfectly square for this to work. Okay, so I'm gonna go up to my rectangular marquee tool, select that and select uh, with a fixed ratio of one to one, just a square area of my image. Doesn't matter how much you use, but obviously you wanna use as much as possible because you're gonna lose some in the process of the cropping and the twisting and things like that. We're gonna to want to make sure that the area uh, on the left hand side and the area on the right hand side of the image are roughly level as much as possible. Uh, this is because when you twist it, those two ends are gonna have to meet up. So say for example, uh, if I drew a line from here to here, you can see that the left hand side uh, edge of the box pretty much matches up with the right, which is fine, that's exactly what we need. It doesn't do so on the trees, but that's all right because we can fix that a bit more easily. I'm gonna say that's pretty much okay. Um, for us here, maybe I'll just tweak it just a little bit to get rid of that tree. And I'm gonna hit my crop tool and hit enter twice to give myself a square. The very first thing you're gonna to want to do is duplicate that layer. This is so that you've got a safe background layer which is completely untouched because this is a destructive process, okay? Um, after that, you're gonna to wanna to go up to uh, filter distort polar coordinates. This will create the twisted effect. It'll open up a little dialog box. Just zoom out so you can see your entire image and you can see already that we're already most of the way there, okay? It is gonna create some weirdness around the edges which I'll just show you when you hit okay. Um, so you can see that where it's taken the edge of that image and turned it into a circle, there are some areas which are a bit messed up because it's had to generate those colors, those pixels. So we're gonna to need to crop those out, okay? So go over to your crop tool again, holding Alt and Shift, just click and drag until the edge of your um, box aligns with the edge of where the circular element ends. Okay, let's just hit OK and confirm. And you'll notice now that the only thing we need to fix is this line down the middle and adding in some extra little trees down here. But it still looks a little bit squished. Okay, so we're probably going to want to pinch this just so that each of these layers are a bit thicker and this area in the center is a bit smaller. Uh, this is an optional step, but I think it helps. If you go up to filter, distort, and pinch, what it'll do, if you see the preview, usually it'll be set to zero, okay, which is your original image, as you can tell. And what you can do with pinch is you can either push the image center of the image out or you can pull the center of the image in, which as you can see, stretches those trees really nicely. 100% is probably a bit too much. Probably something around 40 or 50 will work nicely though. 
it just gives those extra layers where it fades into the background just a little bit more room to breathe. So let's do that. Okay, perfect. Um, we now just need to fix this element in the middle and we are done. So I'm going to duplicate my layer again so that I can mess around with it. And I'm going to go into the center here and I'm going to use the clone stamp tool, clone stamp tool rather, to uh, fix the sky here. So go over to clone stamp, which is on S. And there's, if those who don't know how this works, um, you basically can hold Alt down, sample an area of your image, like the tip of this tree here. And then when you release Alt, you'll have a brush, which is just your standard brush, whatever you've got selected. And you can clone that area of your image somewhere else. So you can add in more trees and stuff like that. Be aware that it will clone any sharp lines as well, though, which is what we're trying to get rid of. So we need to sample somewhere in the middle of the sky that looks roughly the same. And then just carefully paint over any areas that we don't want in our design, like for example, this horrible line. Um, you'll notice as well that when I click and drag with this, a little X appears, that is the area from which you're sampling. And it is best to just sort of sample, draw a little bit, sample, draw a little bit. Otherwise, when you zoom out, you won't be able to see exactly, but you will get like a little bit of a weird thing where you've edited it and people can kind of tell, okay? Basically, fixing the sky there was really easy because it's basically just white. There is some little bits of gradient where there's some clouds and things like that, but nice and easy to fix. The next step, we don't have to worry about fixing these trees because I'm just gonna fill those in, okay? But we do have to fix this little bit of sky. So the best thing to do is to make sure that all your hard lines in this case do extend and carry on, or at least fade out into those clouds there, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sample this hard line here and move it over with my brush and just bring that out just a little bit further if I can, like so, okay? And then I'm just gonna take some of these clouds and with a bit of a larger brush, not so large that I get the edge of the line in there on the left, but with a bit of a larger brush, just fade these two together, okay? And then you can come in from this side, maybe pick something a bit more heavier clouded, like so and just fade the two together. Okay, because you accidentally got a bit of a tree there, so you can just fix that. And then over here, we can just fix that by blending it a bit more. Do the same for this one, to fix that there, okay? Now, that looks not too bad. Um, you can see there's a little bit of darkness here, which looks a bit odd, so I'm just gonna go in with my uh, dodge tool and just brighten that up just a touch. Maybe not that strong. Okay, perfect. Now, there is this huge chunk of trees here, but that's not a problem. We're gonna fix that now with quite a sort of dirty technique. Um, if you just grab your lasso tool and just grab as many trees as you can from any one corner, probably this one's gonna work the best. I'm gonna grab all of this. And I'm just going to duplicate that with Control and J or Command J if you're on a Mac. Then I'm going to twist it around and bung it in the other corner. It's as simple as that. Okay. Um, probably going to want to flip it. See if that works. Image adjustments. Um, flip horizontal. Sorry, that's edit transform. Flip horizontal. And then twist it around again. Like so you can see already where we're gonna be going with this, okay? Place that in place. Might need to do this a couple of times with a couple of different samples of trees, for example, but add a mask to it, and then with a black brush and a soft edge, just go in and hide everything. So hide all the areas where they hit, hit each other. Ah, now there is an issue. Where this tree ends is not as high as where this tree ends. So this probably isn't a good sample. Let's remove that try and see if we can find a bit of a taller one. Maybe this one here. We could also try, you might risk mirroring here, but what you could also try is grabbing this area, duplicating that, flipping it, and seeing if you can't line up those trees like so. You might risk getting a little bit of mirror image sort of syndrome in there though. But let's give it a go, see if it works. I'm gonna see if I can't just tweak this slightly so that it doesn't line up perfectly. And then that way we might get away with it just a touch more, okay? Adding a new mask again, and we're gonna just go in and blend these two images together. 
Okay, obviously where the edges of the trees are, um, that's quite a harsh line to blend, but all the clouds and mountains in the backgrounds and things, nice and easy. Okay, just gonna get rid of all this sky and then with a smaller brush, just come in and fix this. If you hit X, that'll swap around your two colors. So it's a really good way to, you know, erase something and then come and fill it back in again. Yeah, and then erase something and fill it back in again. So we're gonna need a much smaller brush with a much lighter touch here. And we're just gonna come in Fill in this tree. Like so. All right, perfect. Not too bad. You can see there's a little bit here, but you can only notice that because we know that it's there, okay? Um, if someone who looked at this and didn't see where the join was, they might have thought the join was over here or join was over here, they probably couldn't tell. Um, obviously, you could spend much more time on this. Um, I'm just sort of giving you a rough idea for the sake of a tutorial. Let's come in here nice and small and then just soften up the edge. See if we can actually just remove that tree entirely. Like that. That doesn't look too bad. Although if we came in with a different shaped brush, that might work a bit easier. So I take one of these weird rush, um, rough brushes rather. probably get the edge of the tree back in a bit better there so it's not quite as faded and there we go that's pretty much it um, I'd probably keep tweaking uh, if you wanted to of course you could actually group all of those duplicate them and merge them and then you could come in again with your filter distort and pinch and just push it just even a little bit further um, bearing in mind you'll probably have to crop maybe there we go just push it a little bit further even and there you go Job done. Um, it really is as simple as that. It takes a little bit of time to get started with it, but as you can see, the end result is actually pretty cool. Um, you could use this for all sorts of stuff, um, film posters or one of those inspirational quote things you see on Facebook, all that rubbish. Um, so thanks very much for watching everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. Bit of an outlier, not something we usually do, but I saw it and thought it was really cool. So I thought why not share how it was done. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and all that jazz, and I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.